giving me this opportunity to talk to you. It's a hard act to follow. I'm going to be speaking to you about India on the path of urbanization. There is a lot of talk of urbanization in India today. On the one hand, when we look at our cities, we see, we think of air pollution, we think of floods, we think of water contamination. On the other hand, we do have examples of cities which have really, with very little money, but a lot of imagination, a lot of innovation, have transformed themselves in a very short period. So we know that we can actually bring about the change. And change is happening at a very escalating pace, both good and bad. One thing is very clear, that Indian cities have developed ambition. We are talking of smart cities, we are talking of clean cities, we are talking of rejuvenated cities. So what is this urbanization all about? That is what I'm going to be speaking to you about. The first thing to remember is that in India, we really are a late comer to this process of urbanization. By international standards, we have far few people in our total population who we can call as urban residents. Only 33% of Indian population is urban, but given the size of our population, we really are a large number of people who are living in cities and towns. And this 33% is going to increase as you can look at the figure for China, for Brazil, for Korea. As we go down the path of rapid growth, urbanization is going to increase and I'll talk about it why and how. Today, urban GDP accounts for two-thirds of our GDP and it is projected to increase to 75% by 2031. Some other stylized facts for you to absorb, to understand where we are, to provide you the context of urbanization. But I'm going to address three frequently asked questions. Why do we need rapid economic growth? How is this associated with structural transformation? And what does it mean for urbanization? First thing I'd like to highlight is that rapid economic growth is essential if we are to improve the economic conditions of our people. It may not be sufficient because you may fritter away the gains from rapid economic growth, but you cannot improve economic conditions unless you have rapid economic growth. Why not achieve rapid economic growth through agricultural growth? That's because there are limits to agricultural growth. In the best of circumstances, agricultural growth can only deliver 4 to 4.5 percent to an economy. Rapid growth means you have to rely on the faster growing sectors of industry and services. That does not mean that you, you need to neglect agriculture. In fact, agriculture is the base on which industry and services grow. We need to invest in R&D, in productivity, in our agriculture. We need to invest in soil and water management. We need to invest in biodiversity in the face of climate change in order to realize the maximum potential of what agriculture can give us. But this is not enough to improve the lot of those who live in rural areas. What we need is to move labor out of agriculture into urban areas. And why is that? Look at the number of farmers per thousand hectares of land in India. Compare the 1700 number that we have with about 200 in Israel. This means that when you 
have so many farmers on fragmented parcels of land and they cultivate in a labor intensive manner, the productivity is low, which means that the income that they can earn from that land is low. It is not possible for people in rural India to earn a decent living in rural areas. For this, they have to move out. But when they move out to urban areas, to absorb this migrant population into urban areas in gainful employment opportunities, you need industry and services sectors to grow at somewhere at the rate of 8 to 10 percent per annum. What we mean by structural transformation of an economy is when an economy is growing rapidly, industry and services sectors are growing rapidly, the share of agriculture declines, that of the other two increases. This is what we call changing structure of the economy. Normally this happens both in output and in employment. In India, what we have seen is an incomplete structural transformation. We've had a decline in agriculture share of output to something like 14%, but we uh, still have about 50% of the total employment in the economy, which is there in the uh, agricultural sector. Now, urbanization happens when people leave rural areas in search for employment and opportunity in the uh, cities. This has been the development experience of most countries. However, in India, while India has been one of the world's uh, fastest growing economies now for close to 25 years, and particularly in the period from 2003 to 2015, when we recorded a growth rate close to 8% per annum, what we found was that this growth first was imbalanced. It was driven by services and some part of industry which is knowledge-based. Our manufacturing sector did not participate in this growth for reasons that are indicated here. And the employment part of this growth was uh, actually a, a major weakness. This growth of non-agricultural sector did not generate employment opportunities. And as a result, as I mentioned earlier, we still have a huge dependence of our workforce on agriculture. This employment failing uh, achieve, attains an even more serious uh, dimension when you recognize the fact that India is actually sitting on a demographic opportunity. Today, 50% of India's population is below the age of 25. Our working age population as percentage of our total population, as you can see in this chart, is over 62-63%. And what is more, it is going to continue to increase up to 2040. In China, uh, this percentage began declining in 2010. In Brazil, the decline began in, will begin in 2020. But India will continue to have this rising resource. But this dividend can only be reaped if we generate employment, if we skill our population, and if we provide higher education and empower this youth to take part in rapid growth. Uh, so, in this period, while we have had rapid growth and this incomplete structural transformation, there were a few cities that really led this process. They were the engines of growth, but they were fraying at the edges as they delivered this growth because we did not plan for this urbanization. What we, know, what we witnessed was an unplanned urbanization with cracking infrastructure, poor service delivery, poor land use planning, and alarming public health consequences. Today we hear of air pollution in Delhi, 
floods in Chennai, rotting garbage in many cities of India, waste water, sewage in Indian cities and towns. Sewage conditions are such that only less than 20% of our waste water is treated before we return it to nature. That's the state of our cities. So moving ahead, first thing is that we need to acknowledge that urbanization is here to stay and it has to be synergized with rural development. The political economy of India has unfortunately all along been focused on rural development. So much so that even when the census of India declares that an area is ready to be called a town, the state governments are reluctant to empower that town with an urban local government. They would rather let it remain as a panchayat. The panchayat in turn is reluctant to be called a town because they say all the money is in rural schemes and therefore let us remain rural even though <coughs> urban infrastructure is needed because industry and services are coming to this area. Today, there is greater recognition of the need for planning urbanization, but the focus is on technology and um, uh, IT to fix physical infrastructure. The real challenges of urbanization are in the area of urban governance, where the principal actors are the state governments. And when the constitution in 1992 uh, mandated that urban service delivery should be the function of city governments, the state governments have been reluctant to devolve funds, functions, and functionaries. As a result, what we have are urban local bodies, not city governments. City, these urban local bodies have weak finances, and they have no capacity to plan and manage our cities. They cannot increase user charge if they want to deliver a service better. They need to go to the state government to get permission for that. They cannot mobilize their own resources. They have no guaranteed funds that come their way from the state governments. This is about service delivery in cities. The other major requirement of India in its current stage of structural transformation is metropolitan planning and governance. As cities grow, there are clusters of towns <coughs> of, uh, around the city, which is the core part. You uh, have metropolitan regions developing. You need to plan for connectivity. You need to connect cities with towns, with villages. So, in that process, one uh, uh, particular aspect which has to be kept in mind and which is being lost is the rural-urban linkage. And this is where the bread and butter topic of yours comes in very, very uh, crucially. Uh, because as urbanization increases with uh, rapid growth, you will have a changing consumption basket of food People will demand more processed foods, they will demand more fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy. All of this will require farmers switching to high value crops, investment in logistics, investment in processing, investment in transportation, refrigeration, that will add to rural prosperity. Modernization of the retail sector will do much the same. The connectivity with the dedicated rail freight corridor brings will again provide opportunities for the rural and the urban sector to come together. One final word, Punjab used to be number one in per capita income in 1991. It has a rich agricultural base. It led the green revolution in the country. Punjab is an example of a state which has systematically come down both in per capita income terms and agricultural productivity because it did not develop a strategy for industrialization and urbanization. So those are the consequences of inaction. 
In the end, I will say rural versus urban is a false dichotomy. What we need is rural and urban synergy coming together to facilitate the process of urbanization and help push our economy onto the rapid growth trajectory so that we can remove poverty from our country in a short period. Thank you very much.